to this story now, at least 1,500 public servants face criminal charges for illegally conducting business with the state. Public servants are not allowed to do business with the state. But what is the special investigating unit doing about the reported cases of corruption at municipalities and government departments? To discuss this, I'm joined by SIU spokesperson Keza Khanyakho. And Keza, part of the reason I ask that we speak to you is that one starts to get the sense that you are the basket into which everything that can't be explained is thrown. I mean, whether we're talking what's happening at ESCOM with the overpayments, civil servants doing business with government, the scooters in the Eastern Cape, uh, PPEs here in Gauteng. So I wanted to get clarity what it is that you are investigating and what it is that you are not investigating. Let's start with the civil servants doing business with government. It's against the laws, and we are told that some cases are with you. What are you able to confirm? What I can confirm is when we do our day-to-day -day business in terms of the proclamations that are put before us, one of the things that is common in all of those investigations is the fact that we check on people who are doing business with government. Because we know that a lot of the people are doing business in, with government and we then, once we find them, we then make the departments aware. And that is why at the end, we'll have the Department of Public Service and Administration being able to say we have got this number of people that are doing business. But we don't only hold it there. We go a step further at Tulas and we look at whether they influence the contracts that they are involved in. Therefore, when, if they have then influenced this contract, we then go ahead and set aside those contracts and, and then recover the money from the said individuals. So, so in some instances, you, you, you discover that civil servants are doing business with the state in the cause of you doing due diligence, is what you are telling me. Give me some examples. What, what are the typical examples of civil servants who are doing business uh, with the state one way or another, whether directly or through their connections and family? We have found a lot of, of them, for example, in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. And in those departments, you will find that people are having companies, are linked to companies that are doing business because there's a lot of work that happens in the Department of Public Works and Administration. And I'll give you an example, maybe with ESCOM, where we found there were about um, 1, 131 officials doing business with, with ESCOM to the total value of about 5.9 billion rand. And those are some of the examples that I can give you where we have found such people and we have made the, the people involved away. And speaking of ESCOM, there's a situation where there was overpayment of a number of contractors in Gusile. In fact, ESCOM is now preferring uh, the term that says uh, they were criminally inflated, uh, the costs of these contracts. And it says, uh, in a, in, in, when ESCOM was reporting to Parliament, they were saying some of these issues, they've now referred them to you. Have you received any referral, any proclamation in as far as this issue is concerned? What can you tell us about where it stands? Yes. As the SIU, we have been investigating ESCOM for a while, and we have got a proclamation that is Proclamation R11 of 2018. And that proclamation deals with Kusile and other issues related to Kusile. And to that uh, effect, the companies that I've seen circulating around in the media that uh, uh, ESCOM was talking about are the companies that we, in our investigation, went to ESCOM and briefed them about their involvement. And we, we went and briefed the CEO when he started, the CEO of ESCOM. We went to brief him on the 31st of January this year. And we told him about that we were briefing him on the investigation. And those companies that are in place before a, a parliament are the companies that we were involved in. And we are the ones who gave them that information about the inflation of, of contracts and the people that they are dealing with in, in, in ESCOM. And we said to them they must discipline those people who they were dealing with and then deal with these companies for inflating their prices. And I know, Keza, that you're doing extensive work around COVID-19 relief funds and the concerns that we have uh, as South Africans, that while we have all this money that is being sourced somewhere, we're borrowing, we, we're cutting 
um, you know, expenditure from programs that we actually need as a country to prioritize the national response to the coronavirus. But some people out there see an opportunity to make a quick buck and get rich quickly. I know that you're doing a lot of work in that regard. I don't have time to go into that work, but I would want to then ask you that what assurance do South Africans have that you don't become the place where these things go to die? An appeasement strategy, as it were, that, you know, when politicians don't have an answer uh, why um, they went to get clinics and while they were at the warehouse for clinics decided we want to get scooters that were meant for Kenya, uh, so therefore we don't have an answer, let's just say we've sent it to the SIU. What can you tell South Africans? How should we judge your successes and failures in as far as ensuring that people are held accountable? From the SIU side, we can say to the public of South Africa that integrity for us is everything. And what we do, we've got three outcomes that we get when we do all the investigations. We have referrals that we do to the NPA when there are criminalities. We've got secondly referrals that we take to the institutions when there is disciplinary action. And the third one is the issue of getting the money back or recovering the money. And the third leg is the one that we have got um, control of because we then go to our courts and deal with the issues. As we speak now, we have got cases in the uh, high courts to the value of more than 14 billion rand that we are recovering from the people who might have misused the money. And we have got other 23 cases in the special tribunal with the value of about 2.1 billion where we are trying to get that money back but we all we use the, the cost to do that. And we're grateful that the president has given us an opportunity to have the special tribunal that will speed up the cases because some of the cases have been in the high court for a very long time. All right, Keza Khanyaho, thank you so much. We will keep touching base with you. I do believe the work that you are doing is crucial, particularly in as far as paying back the money, that famous phrase, uh, because, you know, we see people uh, being asked to account from time to time, but we never really get to hear uh, what then happens in as far as us getting our money back. That's Keza Khanyakho. He speaks on behalf of the SIU.